Yeah, we were having a very lively discussion um, at the ITOC meeting about uh, if it is valuable or not to um, add uh, chemotherapy on top of immunotherapy or if it's better to uh, just, uh, you know, com combine um, more or different principle of IO uh, therapy in patients with uh, cancer. And this was um, an interesting discussion um, since, uh, I mean, the, the pros of, of combining these modalities are clearly uh, that, that you um, uh, are able to quickly uh, eradicate tumor cells that produce um, potentially immunosuppressive agents and that you can also eradicate um, immunosuppressive uh, immune cell subsets as well. On the other hand, of course, uh, the argument is that um, uh, if you, you know, uh, kill the immune effector cells, the T cells with the chemo component uh, that you apply at the same time as you apply the IO, uh, then you might um, get, uh, get a problem with the effect that these cells uh, have to um, uh, induce in the patient. And um, well, I, in my talk, I was actually focusing on pro probably uh, very, very strong clinical endpoints in the clinical trials, um, rather than discussing the biological rationale, because, uh, you know, uh, there, there might be very um, or many arguments pro and con, but in, in fact, uh, you only see um, uh, the, the most valuable approach if you apply it in patients and do the readout um, of overall survival, progression, progression free survival or disease free time. And uh, I think there are lots. Uh, there are lots of uh, arguments that um, um, that support the use of both modalities. Uh, and I think the common ground that we found also with uh, the other discussant uh, was that it might be um, most beneficial if you apply these two um, um, modalities uh, in a sequential type of approach, so that you kind of don't risk to lose the effect. Uh, since you apply the IO component after chemotherapy. And there are a lot of trials uh, that actually show uh, that, that this is working uh, from urothelial cancer to uh, esophagogastric cancer um, uh, and other uh, good examples. So uh, I think this is something that we kind of concluded from the session. There was a lot of discussion around the, the question, um, how could we eventually also um, get over this philosophy of dosing chemotherapy because uh, you know, the, the, the basic philosophy behind the current schedule is that of maximum uh, tolerated dose scheduling. And this might not be the optimal way to dose these drugs when they are combined with IO uh, due to the uh, before mentioned arguments. So um, on the other hand, this, this also opens up um, uh, a discussion that we have to um, that, that that yeah we have to kind of um, be ready to to do in our academic centers. Uh, how do we actually do those uh, clinical trials in the future? Uh, because um, if we are uh, working on the question what chemotherapeutics can be combined at what dosage dosages at what regimens, then we are getting into a, a whole new area of um, of trials that uh, are far beyond the things that we currently do um, because they have to include so many uh, sub cohorts and it, it will very likely be, be difficult to really uh, address all these issues in the different cancer entities.